Um, I just noticed that this place has a really cool rock with a, a lot of planters around it. Um, anyway, I'm uh, just back here. You know, I cannot get, you cannot get hernia surgery. Boy, this thing is just shaking. This is the worst uh, selfie stick in the whole world. And I'm not going to say where it's from, but uh, uh, talk about some bad design. Uh, it actually um, uh, magnifies the shaking by about uh, 20% more. No, probably two times. Okay, I'm outside this hospital. Um, do you know you cannot get hernia surgery if you have a cough? And uh, this cough has been persistent, although thankfully uh, the infections are all over and I am uh, pretty much kind of back to almost normal. But um, I've still got that, you know, at the end of a cough, sometimes it's kind of like the worst. It's almost like your body, your lungs are going, okay, time to finally get rid of this. And you kind of get those worst, deepest coughs. Hey, but anyway, guys, if you do want to uh, get something done, come over here. And these guys are really good. They're so nice to me, the staff. They're really helpful. And uh, with my kind of like broken, broken, terrible uh, Chinese, yet they still try. And uh, anyway, that's just a little update on that. I'm going to uh, go off to my next thing. Uh, we have a promotion to do. Okay, uh, see you next stop. Uh, we have um, we have done some promotions. Uh, I don't know if you can see him back there. Uh, little Jimmy's taking a rest. Uh, one thing we found out: uh, people either love Little Jimmy, or uh, they really hate Little Jimmy. And there doesn't seem to be any in between. Okay, microphone already dying out. Um, I might just forget about this and use the camera microphone. And I want to just update you guys. Uh, you know, I've been trying to figure out my videos. Like, was it my zipper or what was the noise? And actually, it's this cheap uh, microphone. <laughs> so uh, there's an update. There's a there's a pro tip. If you buy a super cheap uh, wireless microphone, and it has a, it might have a little rattle in it. Ooh, I think it's almost nope. It's back. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind. Already the battery's running out too. So. Um, I can't smoke. I did get, I do have these, yeah, these are great little nicotine pouches. So, uh, that's supposed to be better for you. Um, yeah, actually all of my, uh, students and their families also have this same, uh, cough, upper respiratory. So what I wanted to do was make a video too, where I try to be helpful to people that might want to move or travel or be expats in Southeast Asia. And I'm going to keep this to Southeast Asia. It's going to vary in different countries and regions. Uh, and I'm going to try to do a top list of things that might give you uh, illness, disease, uh, that could compromise your health, and um, the, maybe even the D word. So I found out that if you make videos uh, and put them on YouTube and they have topics that are like not uh, family friendly and mention things uh, that it seems like they shadow ban it somehow. Like, I don't know, but it's like they'll suppress any video that talks about adult or frightening or C-19. Can I say that? So I have to... I'm going to use some careful wording in this because, uh, I, yeah, I, I think they do. They, they, they'll they shadow ban somehow uh, videos that talk about things that are a little too um, not happy. But how else are we going to talk about things that this is for people's safety, you know? So um, speaking of this upper respiratory thing, so there's been, this will be my, uh, I don't know what we can call it number five, I guess. This category is going to be of uh, seasonal colds, seasonal booms. This is something people should think about if you are planning to move to Southeast Asia. And I mentioned this in another video, but when I first got here, oh, I got wrecked with this uh, stupid cold. And I mentioned that uh, local people 
The local people got this and were over it in three days. It was the sniffles, right? It was a, it was a seasonal, I call summer cold. It was uh, September and everyone got this stupid summer cold sniffles. Uh, I think it could be because all the students were coming back to the university campus from all over, but it was nothing. It was a three day, uh, at best you might lay at home would take a day off. Foreigners, in particular Westerners, we got wrecked with this thing. Every one of us, it, we couldn't shake this thing off. Um, de a delirium, or a painful coughing, painful dry coughing. And I mentioned we had an American teacher came over. Can you imagine that? He changed his whole life, moves across the world, gets this, what would be to everyone else that lived there, a seasonal cold. And, uh, he could not get past that. He couldn't get it out of his lungs. He was having painful coughing set painfully. Um, a month went by. He could not get this thing out of him and that's it. He had to pack up and he moved back, moved back to the States. So we think about that. Okay, so I know some people say, well, I, so what? We have flus and colds and viruses over here. Yeah, but you might not be immune to ones that are around Southeast Asia, might have strains that you, that we didn't have back in the West. And so we get slammed by the much worse. Um, I hear all the time too, guys will say, uh, oh, uh, you know, well, when I was back in the UK, you know, I can barely remember ever. I almost never got a, a the seat, you know, a cold, or if I did, I, you know, and boy, this one has really got me. I, this, I don't know what this is. I can't. Well, it could be that yes, you got a strain of, um, you know, whatever influenza or something that uh, is maybe common in the Philippines or uh, Vietnam. They've had this strain, but. They're all immune to it. They get it. It's a, eh, they feel sick for a few days, but you will be just wiped out by this thing. This thing will kick you. Uh, my next, my next uh, category of things that will wreck you. Uh, do you know when I was in Thailand, a uh, very sad, uh, young, beautiful girl from Norway. I think it was Norway. She, um, Saw some puppies dumped in a ditch, which uh, something else you could think about uh, before you want to move and live here. And of course, she was thought it was terrible, and she took these puppies and took them uh, back to her hotel room and uh, was giving them a bath. And one of the puppies nipped her, and I think it was two days later she was in the hospital with rabies. And there's no cure for rabies. Um, at least once you get it and the infection goes through you, um, and you'll want to drink a lot of water and you'll die very soon afterwards. And she did, but I'm going to put a category here of things that you really want to think about if you're going to move to Southeast Asia, which is kind of like, um, allergies, allergies or infections, uh, that you may not have at home. Um, if I look down at my leg, I still have a great big red splotch where I picked up something from a, uh, there was, there's a type of plant, uh, like in Southern China, Northern Vietnam, and it got, a, a like kind of like a plague, I guess you call it a breakout of some kind of, um, uh, some kind of plant disease. Uh, and so I went, I was out at a a far rural village and what the doctors told me is that's what you got you walk you obviously brushed against this uh, particular type of plant which has this particular type of infection that was um tell you actually honestly i didn't really know i didn't i don't think i knew that plants got that <laughs> but they do and they pass them to people and i always want to share this story that when i was uh that su same summer so I had this blotch. Oh man, I had this like it would turn blue, and then you get like a like a whitish. Uh, it's hard to explain, but it looked like leopard spots, like a, almost like a bluish red leopard spots all over your leg. And then I, 
I would say in the summer, we would go up, if you would take an escalator, so people are wearing shorts and skirts, you know, in the hot, it's hot summer. And you'd look up and it would look like, I swear, I, it almost looked, made me think of people were wearing those, you know, those Lululemon super tight tights, you know, with a pattern on it. And it looked like, like a blue leopard pattern, but it wasn't, it was their skin. It was their actual skin uh, would have these splot these leopard splotches all over it. And for probably about two summers that carried on where you, and yeah, you would go up and ask me like, I swear half the legs that you would see would have these splotches all over them, which again, I was told this from a, a particular kind of plant. There's an also snakes. Um, I didn't, I did not see a snake in Laos or in Thailand, but I was told to be very careful about walking in the grass. Uh, so again, a snake bites. Um, some of them are very poisonous. Uh, and could, I don't know if you can deword from them. It's probably is. Um, another thing being weird insects. Um, I'm putting, I'm going to categorize all this in there too, is mosquitoes. Uh, I might've mentioned this, but there actually there's 10, there's a whole list of different I don't know if it's mutations or whatnot of mosquito-borne illnesses. Um, I swear I was going to D-word from one. And I am not, I, people, I beg you to believe me. I'm not saying that as an, oh, I thought I was going to D-word. But like I was, I I was, I did, if I had the strength to find a pencil and I couldn't get up and I wanted to write a goodbye. You two, please don't censor this because it's trying to help people. Again, I am only communicating things that I have gathered and have been said. I'm not giving anybody any kind of advice, but animal. So there we go. We're going to make by the category allergies, plant allergies, food allergies, animal allergies, uh, uh, reactions to things, which see again, maybe you don't even have these type of things, these insects or these type of plants in your home country. So you're going to move to Southeast Asia and you might be subject to, maybe you are highly allergic to them. You don't know because you don't have this type of animal or bug or snake or, um, or plant substance in your home country. You never grew up with it. You've never built any immunity to it. So I, I'm actually going to make that a category too. I have seen many people become very ill um, or like even to the mosquito one. There's one, because I remember I got all these red spots broke out all over me. Um, I don't know what to say, like just like a, a painful bump, a um, red bump of some kind. Well, I found out later that this is a common effect from the mosquito, some of the kinds of mosquito. We've had foreigners where I've seen them get stung by a mosquito. Now, they didn't become super sick or have to go to a hospital, but then they got a terrible rash. So skin rashes, that type of thing. And it can, that stuff can ruin your life because you can also then that gets infected. Next thing you know, you've got skin infections and rashes and you're back and forth trying to get these treated and it's just ruining your life and painful. Yeah. Okay, gang, my next category, I'm going to call these cuts. <laughs> you know, uh, when I can still remember before I went, moved to Southeast Asia, I told my family doctor and the first thing he says is, he goes, oh, okay, I got to get you a tetanus shot. I said, tetanus, tetanus shot. I've, I mean, I've heard of it, but I go, what? I don't know what that is, really. What is that? What is that? Tetanus shot. And he goes, oh, uh, you'll cut yourself on metal and you don't want that. You'll get infected uh, in Southeast Asia. And he was from Southeast Asia. And he says this, like, obviously. I thought, well, that's weird because I don't usually cut myself on things. Well, even in this apartment, I have foam that I've stuck and sometimes taped around, for example, the metal hand reeling up there. When you get to the top, there's the, the, 
it just meets and, and maybe it's a spot weld. It's a razor sharp. If you were to go up there and there's nothing on it, you will cut your hand straight up open like a jaggedy, rusty knife. I have cut my hand several times on taxis where they'll have a metal grate. And that metal grate, does n there's no clean wells. That is just raw aluminum, just zapped together. And you'll put your hand through to give them the money or whatever and cut your hand. I've got several cuts right now are still scars on the top of my head from my cupboards where the metal handles are just sheared off. A forwarder told me that they got um, hospitalized from uh, from a cut. Sorry, my vague, my brain is slow. I'm trying to get it going. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Some, yes, he cut himself on something, and then he got, oh, it was a blood infection? And so, like, his arm, whatever it was that he cut himself, his arm, his, the, his veins were like blue, but not like in a cool blue blood princess way. <laughs> but like, you know, what's, they used to call the royals, the blue blood, uh, turned all infected or some, something like this. I can remember my grandmother got that from a cat once. So, uh, I, you know, like, I should go and find out who that, what's the story on that. But he got hospitalized. Ready? This is my second most likely thing that will injure you in Southeast Asia. It's going to be work, health and safety, workplace accidents. It's going to be an injury from the infrastructure. So um, should I include cars in that? You know what? I'm not even going to include cars. Uh, we'll make that another next level related to my number one, which just wait, don't go anywhere. I'll tell you what's the number... I, promise you is the number one thing that will get you wrecked in Southeast Asia. And you won't believe what it is. Actually, some of you will be surprised when I tell you, I guarantee you is the number one. Um, but before that, I'm going to say it's actually infrastructure. Um, a lot of Southeast Asia has uh, some pretty choppy. Let me tell you guys something. If I did a video on Things that I've seen here. I think some of you would accuse me of faking it. You'd say, oh, you just found these rare things and you're pretending that it's normal. But in fact, it is normal. I have seen sinkholes. I have stepped on bricks and felt them collapsing. Uh, they're one of the first things I saw in Southeast Asia was, I, sw I swear I was walking. Um, hey, look at me. I'm walking down a street in, I can't believe this is South. I've never been. And I look over and it's, it's, it's like a misty rain. And I look over and there's sparks coming out of this thick piece of uh, electrical wire sticking out of a wall. And there's people pulling umbrellas. I'm just watching the, the aluminum of the umbrella just going past this live electrical line. Uh, you guys, one day, maybe if I can find the location, I'll do it. I was almost removed from this planet by a big chunk of sign that fell off a hotel and exploded, exploded a e-bike that was right there beside me and put shrapnel in my face. That's the dirt from the exploding tire and the bent roof and then shot shrapnel in my face. Uh, so as I could reach my hand out and there was a massive chunk of a sign that fell off. Sidewalks that are cracked, broken side. You, um, I can think of a, a lot of times you'll find stuff here. that's just really poorly done. Like a bus stop where you, in order to walk around, it's not right, and the curb is too close in. And sadly, um, two years ago, an old guy died uh, from exactly that. He was coming, or he was trying. I know what he was trying to do. He was trying to go behind the bus stop, and the little sidewalk is so thin, and he is rolled out his ankle. 
just as a bus was coming by and he rolled his ankle off that curb, which was too high and uneven. And then he, oh, his ankle gave out and he flipped out in front of the bus. Um, so things falling from buildings, uh, electricals, uh, poorly done, wrongly done. We had smoke coming out of the floor of apartments because the wiring was starting to smolder. Um, carbon monoxide poisoning. Routinely, people get killed in elevators. You'd be shocked how many people and pets are maimed, killed, strangled, and beheaded in elevators in Southeast Asia. You will be shocked at how many escalator deaths and injuries. Um, what else? Uh, think falling. <laughs> I don't know if I can put a picture. If I find the picture, I'll tag it in here. But um, I was just in McDonald's and I knew I could hear some workers up there. And then all of a sudden, all the tiles fell on me and my nice hamburger and uh, just uh, thank God there were those uh, foam tiles, you know, whatever that uh, pressed, whatever it is. So um, I wasn't injured, but oh, oh, shower electrocutions. Uh, there's this is not good. There's been a whole. Yeah, we know because we have some relative that worked in a hospital warning us about this and I had actually tried to order one of the heaters and the guy refused to deliver it when he found out um, because they had put out a rule uh, like an emergency rule uh, not to install those because people were getting electrocuted in showers um, shower electrocutions are shockingly common throughout Southeast Asia and uh, like again because they'll have electrical boxes in in what we call a wet shower, there's not a separate shower room. It's also where the toilet and the sink and all the plugins are. Tour is leaning against something and then that breaks and then you fall into the river. Uh, most terrifying theme park ride we ever went on <laughs> was a little pedal bike thing around. <laughs> and, I was, and I looked out, I could see missing screws, loose screws that were like just rattling and trying to fall out and thinking, oh no, like this was the most terrifying theme park ride ever. And not for the reasons you think, but because you're just going, oh, this thing's collapsing. So what's my number one? If you get a motorcycle, you need to plan ahead. You will be injured buy that motorcycle. Uh, not just me, where you will, something will happen and then you will uh, rip yourself a new hernia. Although I swear that could be a thousand expat. I'm telling you now, you talk to anyone that drives in Southeast Asia and they will tell you stories that you will not believe. Uh, there's And it is routine, some of these things will happen. They will happen every time you go out on a motorcycle. Yes, indeed. Somebody will come up on your left-hand side and cut right in front of you to turn left or turn right. The, uh, they will pass you uh, while you're doing a U-turn. There's nothing is <laughs> off limits. It, there'll be, you will be injured if you get a motorcycle and you drive it long enough. So here's the thing too. The next guy who's going to say... But actually, uh, you've been driving a motorcycle in the UK for many years, and you are the most at risk for being injured, hit, crashed, and maybe even deworded. It will be you who is a, a very experienced rider back in your home country because you are more likely to follow the exact rules. You are more well-trained to do exactly what you're supposed to be doing. And that is very dangerous. Uh, so you would, in some way, it almost be safer if you've never driven a motorcycle and then you moved to Southeast Asia and learned how to just got a motorcycle and started driving around. Because then you would learn, you have a chance. 
that he would be learning as you would accept that people will be coming down the wrong side of the road, that they don't, uh, they do not yield, <laughs> uh, that they won't, red, red does not mean stop, really, it's kind of like a suggestion, um, that they will pass you on left and right hand sides, you will not believe the crap that goes on, but you will almost certainly be in a motorcycle, a motorcycle is the number one injure and hospitalization and de-worder of expats in Southeast Asia. To the point, if you will drive a motorcycle, it is almost 100% that you will sustain an injury from it. It's almost to the point where it won't be called an accident because it's actually what, what happens. It's what will happen. It is going to happen. Uh, and it, you know, it doesn't matter to you that if you did nothing wrong, I was following the rules. This guy came out and it's unbelievable. He just drove straight through the intersection and rammed me. Uh, because also too, a lot of times those drivers, they're expecting every other driver is also a Southeast Asian driver. So they kind of have their own understandings of things. Whereas like you you decide to whoa and stop at the red light and they don't expect that. They expect you are like, like they do there. You will just go through and it's clear. So you're going to obviously go through the red light and you stop and they'll just whammo, just smash you from. So, uh, but it still doesn't matter, right? Because then you are still severely injured. Your motorcycle is destroyed and, uh, and you're in a hospital bed, right? So it doesn't matter who's right or wrong. It's what's going to harm you. So I hope YouTube does not like shadow ban this. So I don't know. I'm trying to share it with your friend. Oh, God, by the way, you guys, I'm supposed, apparently I'm supposed to, they told, my YouTube says, I apparently I have this very good watch time. Like I have, very high watch time for com relative to subscribers, which I thought was a good thing. But then they're like, um, no, it's not a good thing. It means that you are not, people are watching your videos, but you need to tell them a uh, call to action to please subscribe to this video. So I'm supposed to tell you to subscribe to my channel. Uh, lots of people watching, but nobody's hitting the subscribe button. Uh, so subscribe because then you're going to get all kinds of wacky fun things. And uh, I hope that this is good advice for some people. Um, I wanted to actually also end this with more good advice. Um, so what I'm telling you is bring your medicine. So what I would say is try to get as many of, if you have a prescription, uh, go in and request and say you will be going for three months or six months or whatever it is. Try to get the maximum amount. Um, if you know you need some device, uh, you need this kind of, I don't know, whatever. Uh, what's those breathing things I see people? You can put something on there, CPAP, CPAP or something, or whatever, it's, or it's a brace. You've injured your arm and you have to wear a, uh, an arm brace. I know. You, yes, you probably can get it here. But what I'd strongly recommend is that you take that with you. Is bring all of those things that you think you will need. I don't care. You have to pack a whole suitcase with it. And then, then go to Southeast Asia. If you can find those things where you are, that's great. But bring those things with you. Uh, upvote and subscribe. And I really hope some of this will be helpful. And at least please think about these things before you move to Southeast Asia. Good night, Jimmy. Good night, everyone.